Tonight, the graphene wars can begin, Pinterest takes on Google, and Bitcoin fans can't catch a break. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 89 for Friday, May 16th, 2014. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. First up, the next big battleground for Apple, Samsung, and even Google could be just one atom thick. According to Bloomberg, companies are amping up patent applications involving graphene. It's a revolutionary material that has the potential to drastically change electronic devices. For example, electricity flows through graphene 100 times faster than silicon. It is an as one single atom thick, it's transparent, bendable, and can be folded. It can be used in everything from flexible touch screens, smartwatches, tablets, and other wearables yet to be invented. Here in the U.S., Samsung has 38 patents and at least 17 patent applications involving graphene. Apple has at least two. Add to this other tech companies who want to use it, like Google, IBM, Foxconn, plus laboratories and the manufacturing industry. Graphene might just be technology's next battleground. Bitcoin can't seem to catch a break. So far, at least 10 members of the Bitcoin Foundation have resigned over the election of entrepreneur, financier, and former Disney child star Brock Pierce as the new director of the nonprofit. Pierce has been plagued by drug and sex-related accusations and lawsuits. Regardless of how this plays out, many members are calling for a better vetting process for candidates to positions within the foundation. And on a somewhat more positive Bitcoin note, Circle, a new online Bitcoin bank, has raised $26 million. The service opened to the public today by invitation only and allows customers to deposit U.S. dollars and convert them to Bitcoin immediately without any fees. The deposits are 100% insured and Circle complies with all of the U.S. money transmitting and anti-money laundering laws. Their hope is to be a Bitcoin bank for the masses and even easier uh, to use. Now, Bitcoins are not widely used and their regulation is uncertain at the moment. Uh, Circle also faces a number of competitors, including Coinbase and BitPay. Could Pinterest take on Google? After raising $200 million from investors and with a current valuation of $5 billion, they could become a big player in search. With over 30 billion pins, Pinterest could be a leader as search moves from text to visual. According to Reed White, re, sorry, Reed Wright, with a growing trend of a visual web, quote, Pinterest could leapfrog search as we know it and become the search engine of tomorrow, end quote. Recently, CEO Ben Silberman introduced Guided Search, which tries to predict the information a user wants before they finish typing it in. We'll see if the company moves from a social network into more of a social or a search service. And speaking of Google, how about a little Google 3-pack? First up, Google just snapped up Quest Visual, the company behind the cross-platform app WordLens that lets you use the camera on your device as a real-time language translator. The WordLens team will become part of Google's Translate team, undoubtedly improving the intelligence in that app to make sure that you don't get lost the next time you're traveling through foreign lands reading the signs on the street. As a thank you, Google is making the WordLens app free, as well as all the language packs, something that you would have had to have paid extra for prior to this acquisition. Second up on the Google block, that digital assistant known as Google Now just got a bit smarter with the addition of bill payment reminders. Google will monitor your Gmail inbox, and if it detects a statement that points to a payment due date coming up, Google Now will do you a solid and remind you to pay up on time. So if you stopped all of those bill pay reminder emails to cut down on inbox, inbox spam, you might want to think twice and reactivate in order to take advantage of this new feature. And third, if you bike and you love Google Maps, then you're going to have a good day. Google Maps now includes elevation for bike routes, making it even easier to plan your rides in advance and know just how much water you're going to need in your camelback when you reach the peak. If a route is actually flat, no elevation information will be shown, and this extra information isn't yet available in the mobile version of Maps, though one can expect it to hit the mobile device uh, sometime in the future. Now, coming up, I know you've always wanted Wolverine claws that extend and retract. We'll show you one crazy guy who created the real deal. It's super cool. Uh, but first, joining us today is Nathan Olivares Giles, consumer technology reporter for the Wall Street Journal. Welcome to the show, Nathan. 
How you doing? Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. It's good to have you here. Right yes, on. we can hear you. We got gotcha. you. So um, not too long ago, Foursquare made an announcement that they would be splitting their efforts in two different directions, seeing that users either used Foursquare to meet up with each other or to discover new places to go. And uh, they actually just announced, their, or released rather, their new app called Swarm, uh, kind of their answer to those who wish to find nearby friends and check into places. What, uh, and of course, you wrote about it on the Wall Street Journal. Uh, That's why we have you on today to talk all about this. What exactly can Swarm do by itself that couldn't be done using the current Foursquare app? Well, you know, there's not much really that it does that you couldn't do before. The one thing is there are a couple little tools that should make meeting up with friends a little easier in the app itself. You can actually post something in a section called Nearby Plans and say, hey guys, tonight I'm going to go see Godzilla. Who wants to come with me? And then all of your Foursquare friends, uh, because your Foursquare ca- account is used to sign into a Swarm, can then respond and say, yeah, I'm interested. I'd like to see go- Godzilla too. Let- let's go make it happen. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the idea is, is, you know, this is the place where you get all of your friends, you know, mobilized to actually go and do something. Uh, within the app, you can also click on a friend's profile and then they can, you know, uh, have a link, like a link to message them on text messages or Facebook Messenger. But I'm not entirely sure why you would go to this app to message somebody whose phone number or Facebook contact you probably already have. Right. Yeah. It's a, it's an interesting approach also on the on the gathering or the plans section because in my playing around with it, it's like you can set up a plan like, hey, we want to do this thing, but then it's just kind of out in the air it's not like you're scheduling it so that you remember it later it's just like yeah i'll be there and then that's kind of it the conversation ends there you know you kind of have to take it the next step so maybe they'll work yeah if you're going to use this as the app to actually get your friends together you got to be pretty diligent about checking in and seeing Mm -hmm. if anyone was responding or have those you know push notifications turned on otherwise like you said it'll get lost in the ether and you also better make sure that all of your four square buddies are people you'd actually want to hang out with and see because you're really just blasting this out there to to anyone that you're connected to. Yeah, very good point. Now, we just saw uh, Foursquare hit Google Glass with new glassware that lets uh, users app ch- uh, users of the service check in, find places through the service using Glass. And Foursquare has a new revision to their mobile app. It's part of their kind of s- strategy to split up their apps uh, that kind of serve different purposes into different directions. That's currently scheduled to see a big update sometime this summer, and that focuses its core functionality uh, in in other ways, what kind of changes should we look forward to when that happens? Well, you know, if Foursquare actually delivers and, and does what they say they're going to do, it's really going to turn it into almost like a Yelp competitor. They're saying mm-hmm. it's going to be a mix of really uh, like the yellow pages where you just kind of go to see like, okay, here are all the nearby, you know, flower shops or deli sandwich places or anything like that. Um, and so there's going to be a big focus on that, but there's also going to be reviews um, and a lot of discovery type features. So they're hoping that this will be the place where you, you, you go to find any location you want to see, but also trust it as an authority to figure out which one of those locations nearby that you actually want to go to. So it's really pitting it directly against, you know, the likes of Yelp, Zagat, really anything you use to, to find nearby places. Yeah, um, which kind of leads perfectly into the next question. Foursquare as a company, you know, came out of the gate strong uh, when it debuted at South by Southwest in 2009. I believe I was at South by Southwest that year and everybody was going nuts yeah. over Foursquare. So it had a strong uh, coming out party. It certainly has its devotees still, uh, but in kind of in the world of social networks online, there are a number of other ways to do this. Like you say, there are a number of other services that offer what Foursquare uh, has done for so long and what they plan to do with the, the new breakout app. Um, is splitting the app into multiple directions the answer for the company? Do they risk confusion here by doing that with people that are so used to using the app in a certain way, or is that even is that even enough in this day and age? You know, it's it's a big risk, yeah. um, but at this point, they kind of need to take some risks. Uh, sure. Right now, the company is valued about at about six hundred and fifty million dollars. Uh, they recently had a, a, a new investment round of about thirty-five million. Fifteen uh, million of that came from Microsoft, and they're sharing some of their location data with Microsoft there. So they're really trying to find new ways to leverage all this data that they've, they've been collecting over the years, but also entice people to come back who might have left before. So at at some point, you know, Foursquare was one of those social networks that everyone thought of as like, okay, this is what social networking is today. This is the, you know, the cool apps that everyone's using. Um, You mentioned Pinterest in a segment earlier. Mm -hmm. They're valued at about 5 billion bucks. 650 million nowadays comparatively really isn't that much for a top tier social network. So um, they really have a lot of work to do in order to really get uh, things turned around here. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know if splitting the app is really the way to go. I mean, 
For example, Facebook's been trying that really hard. Um, but in the past, even it's failed for them. They just recently shut down their camera app. They shut down Poke. Uh, they had their uh, Facebook Home app, and that really never took off. Now they're trying really hard with paper and forcing people into Messenger. But if someone like Facebook, which is the most dominant social network in the world, can't even succeed with this strategy, I don't know what makes us think that Foursquare can. It's a big, big gamble, but they need to take some gambles right now. Yeah, it's probably just kind of one of those situations where it's like, you know, it may or it may not work, but we need to do something because, uh, yeah, yeah, it's kind of uh, the tide has turned a little bit with the service. Uh, they need to play a little catch up. Uh, Nathan, really appreciate you coming on to the show and sharing your insights on Foursquare and the new Swarm app. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Where can people follow your work online? Find out, uh, find what you do. Yeah, so uh, wsjd.com. That's where all of the tech coverage is for the Wall Street Journal. All my stuff is there. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Nate O-G, N-A-T-E-O-G. Awesome. Original Giles. <laughs> Original Giles, yeah. yeah. They're my initials. So, all right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. All right, thanks again, Nathan. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. And finally, if you've ever wondered what it might be like to actually harness the power of Wolverine's retractable claws, well, Colin Furs has your back. He's a slightly mad garage inventor with a penchant for creating things that look, I don't know, a tad unsafe maybe, uh, but undeniably cool. He created the fully automatic claws around a system that harnesses compressed air to both extract and and retract the claws mechanically. He does have to wear a backpack to make it all work, and it looks rather weighty, but Wolverine claws, who cares? Brian, crank up the audio. Let the mad scientist take over. <laughs> oh, man, extreme! If you love his devotion and creativity to the X-Men franchise, you'll want to follow him in the coming days as he's promised even more X-Men themed projects to come and hopefully more videos like this one. Please, more videos. That's all I ask. <laughs> That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. Do not miss our morning news program, Tech News Today. It's every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Have a great weekend and thank you for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.